everyone, this is Ashley Jamerson coming to you from Costner Law with Ashley Cameron. Now, depending on when you pop into this series, this is technically video number two. Video one was talking about divorces. Um, this video, we are going to focus on another sticky situation in real estate, and that is when your spouse dies. Like what happens to your home and your real estate interests if your spouse was to pass away? So um, probably the first question you would have is, will I be forced to sell my house if my spouse died? So um, it, lawyers say this all the time, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, the spouse dying does not automatically mean you're gonna have to sell the home. It also doesn't automatically mean you as the surviving spouse um, lose the home. Um, it really matters whether or not the um, surviving spouse is on the deed, um, on title. If the um, deceased spouse was the only person on the deed, you may run into some problems with regards to it needing to be um, the will. If there's a will, they're going to need to see who the house actually was designated to go to based on the um, on the will itself. Mm -hmm. um, it's also important to know that they were still married, so there is a marital interest. Um, so the wife or, or the spouse does have a marital interest in the property. It's mm -hmm. not like gone. They do have some interest. Um, but it may be they share interest with someone else. So if the other spouse had kids from another marriage or anything like that. So what really matters is to make sure that um, if you are married and you have a piece of property, that both of you are on the deed to the marital home, to the, to the house that you live in. If um, Or you need a will that says who the house is supposed to go to at, at your death. Um, it's very important to have those things in place because otherwise you're leaving it up to just uh, the statutory laws of North Carolina. Which are not always friendly mm. or understanding of the day. You know. may not agree with them. Yeah. If your spouse is like on their deathbed or they get a really bad diagnosis and it's like a foreseeable death, they, I mean, they think the death would be cured and things like that, but you know, to prep, to make sure everything is tidied up and things, what do you recommend? Well, estate planning is important for anybody who's, um, I mean, real anyone. It doesn't, even if your spouse is the only one, you know, in your immediate family, but if you have a wife, if you have kids, a husband, um, all of those things can be um, a lot easier if you've already designated how it's supposed to be handled in an estate planning with a will. Wills make things a lot easier when it comes to uh, finalizing the affairs because it's very clear what, what needs to be done well should be very clear mm -hmm. as long as you went to someone who actually drafted a will that makes sense occasionally we get wills that are very confusing oh, um, yes. so everyone signs the will is it having notarized or recorded anywhere uh, it doesn't get recorded but what um, it does there is there are um, statutory things that you have to follow to make a will valid and that mm -hmm. is um, it does have to be notarized and you have to have two witnesses non it disinterested witnesses of people that are completely unrelated to the will um, that don't aren't expecting any kind anything out of the will mm -hmm. um, and it just is uh, it gets recorded it's not really recorded so much as it gets um, filed with the clerk of court um, okay. with 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 the death uh, yeah. it's, it's important as the probate a will mm -hmm. to make it public record so it's not recorded like like, re like a deed is recorded but they publish it with the clerk of court so that um, anybody that needs to look can go get it. Okay, and anybody is typically people that lean on like and things like that. Like me, wants to check the background on the title to make sure that there's anything, you know, if we're, if we're dealing with a property that's in an estate um, from someone who's recently died, you have to follow all of the like processes. Mm -hmm. Will everything automatically, you sort of answer that, so it won't automatically transfer to the spouse? If their own title, it is automatic. Okay. Um, and North Carolina is important to remember that real property law, um, once someone dies, um, whoever their heirs are, we might not know who they are right away, but whoever mm -hmm. those heirs are, um, they immediately have interest upon that death. The tricky part with selling um, something that's, you know, selling a property from um, real estate uh, out of an estate where someone's recently died is that a lot of title companies are going to want to make sure that. Uh, the notice to creditors is run because um, property can be brought into probate to pay debts, to settle debts. Mm. So it's always really important to um, kind of follow that for a title company, for attorneys, we want to make sure that no interest is outstanding. Oh my so that's why we always want that to run. So what I'm taking from this is 
typically if both spouses were alive they would just be paying off the two deeds or like the, the sorry the loans of the property right but if one passes away then old things could attach to the sale of the property it's not old it's more of um if there are creditors um and that's not ne necessarily going to be something that attaches if it's a marital part like if they were if they owned it together okay. because there's a protection against um things attaching when it comes to that it's other times when um the property was not titled um right with the two spouses together that's when it can be wow. attached so do you recommend like which has higher more clout i guess would it be the will or the quick claim deed adding the spouse to the deed which would be easier i guess uh well with regard it's two different things but um mm -hmm. either is going to do the job mm -hmm. um the quick cleaning is going to if, so if you have a non-titled spouse and you want to put them on the deed so that they are listed as a married and what what we're looking for here is what they call tenancy by the entirety mm -hmm. um, which is the highest classification of protection that a married couple you know gets it protects them from creditors for the husband attaching to the property that the wife also owns they have to actually be um, attached it would have to be against both people for it to attach to the property okay. which is the point of it they're a unit together as a married couple so mm -hmm. as one instead of two people so another tough sticky situation is the house is under contract and either one of the sellers passed away or one of the buyers that's under contract passes away let's talk about the sellers first do does the spouse have to sell it's emotional it's so a lot going on. generally um, and I would probably take this on a case by case basis, but um, general contract law says that death voids a contract. Mm -hmm. um, so you're definitely looking at a, 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 the person who signed the contract is obviously no longer with us to actually fulfill mm -hmm. the contract. But a lot of times what will happen is um, this, the estate is obligated to fulfill the um, desire of the seller. Okay. They were under contract at the time that they, they passed. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't use a power of attorney to sign for them because power of attorney is only good while a person is alive. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people attempt that, and that's not right. The power is gone as soon as someone passes. Mm -hmm. um, you actually have to sort of, in a, in, a, in a way, get a new contract or an addendum to the contract to make the estate um, capable of selling the property. And realtors don't have a copy of that addendum like that would have you drafted. By yeah, an attorney, it would like, be cleaner if you had an attorney just mm -hmm. say, or even just change it like you do. Um, I don't think you guys are allowed to change the contract after it's been written on, right? We can just mark through and have all the parties initial, like mark through one of the names on the contract. That could be done, or an attorney could draft the um, addendum to the contract stating that it would, you know, in case of the decedent, um, the estate will be the ones to actually. Um, it. So, you're under contract, one of the spouses pass away, and then it's not claimed. There's no will, there's no quick claim deed. The person living there is like one of those long term, forever, that's my stepmom type of things. Like she's been a part of the family. Um, the heirs would be the kids. And her. and her. If she was married, she still has an interest. Married, just a long term. Oh, no. There's okay, no so, common law here. So. Um, well, if. If she's not married, she doesn't have any right. any rights to the property, and hopefully she's in really good with the, um, kids. With the kids because mm -hmm. it is going to go to the next heir, which would be the children. And then to sell it, they all have to write it. All their spouses have to be there. Any spouse yeah. would have to sign. Yep. So, so possibly so. six people if they have three kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. You gotta get on with six people. All of them, including the including the spouses of the inherited oh my goodness. people. Yeah. So it can get kind of messy if um if you don't designate who it's going to. That's yet another reason why yeah, estate planning is estate planning is very important. Oh my goodness. Okay, so if you are buying a home and one of the sellers pass away, do they have to sell you? Like, do you have any rights? Like, what is what is like? What am I trying to say? What are you waiting for? What do you need to? wait on to, you, to in most cases the estate will pass the property on behalf of the decedent mm -hmm. um, but like I said before about the estates most title companies and therefore attorneys are going to want the notice to creditors to run mm -hmm. because that it, it just is another layer of protection for the buyer saying that it is free and clear of any debts um, because the while property real property does not 
get prorated. It does not get pulled in. Um, it can be pulled in mm -hmm. to satisfy any debts. So the personal representative or the executor can pull the property in to... Like taxes. Yeah. That's probably the only thing. Not student loans or medical, but usually just All taxes. of those things actually attach to the, It's considered... Yeah, a, if, if... That's why you run the notice to creditors, because mm -hmm. that... Is a notice that tells all creditors, hey, so and so has died. Um, you have 90 days to make a claim. Days. To make a claim. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't make the claim, then you're void. Your your rights to collect any kind of credit, you know, creditors, the creditors' rights are void. So this, like the closing, could probably be delayed for at least 90 days. So I guess it would be up to the buyer if they want to back out. Sure. Yep. That's good to it know. It could be delayed for now. It could, it could be that uh, the attorney and the, and the title company is just happy with the notice of creditors running, mm -hmm. um, which is a two-week period. Okay. That has to run, you know, two weeks. So they might not make you wait the 90 days, but... But be prepared, yeah. you know, in case something happens. Mostly if a seller dies, you can get it sold. You just got to use the estate. It's a whole other story if the buyer dies. Contract dies with the buyer. Oh, well, I guess so because they have to get the loan. And, I mean, uh, the death 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 typically voids a contract. Mm -hmm. I mean, the person who you went into contract with is no longer there to fulfill the contract. Wow. The reason why it works on the seller side is you have someone that can work on their behalf as the executor of an estate of what's left of that person's belongings and things, mm -hmm. and they can actually do it. But a buyer, you know, you're pretty much just not selling that property to that person. <laughs> Oh goodness. So. Okay. So this is part two of our sticky situations, things that can go wrong in real estate. Definitely like, share, and subscribe so you do not miss out on our upcoming sticky situation videos. And this is also going to be shared on Ashley's, there's two of us, two Ashley's, on Ashley's Facebook page. So if you have any additional questions and you are currently involved in a situation that would if you just need advice or help or a referral to a good estate, um, administrative administration um, this is real estate so we try not to touch um, things we're not we don't do on a day-to-day -day basis but I can definitely refer you out to some really great people awesome awesome well definitely subscribe and we will have some more information soon